Hi guys, it's Thursday night. It's time to learn something different tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about framing needlework. Or, or it could be embroidery, it could be counter cross stitch, it could be cruel, anything you have that you want to show. It could be even a quilting block. So uh, this is really fun to do and because like really how many pillows and tote bags can you have? <laughs> so so anyway, uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can uh, frame your needlework and uh, or actually to mount it for framing. This is one of the first things is we're going to show you how, to, how we did them professionally, how you can do it with a frame and some different and some different methods to do it. So this was done years and years ago and let me switch the camera so you can see better what I'm what I'm doing and what I'm looking at so, and get some better light on there alrighty this one was done probably this one was professionally done this was just plain crown and cross stitch it was done a very long time ago this was using a frame that you uh, and it was an old technology frame Nowadays, they laser cut these miters. <laughs> we used to have to use a miter saw in the old days, and this was done in the old days. I believe this one was done in the early 1980s. So it's been a long time. Uh, so anyway, and you can see that it has gotten, it's got regular nail holes where you put it to, you had to cut it with a miter saw, and you had nail holes. On the back of it once it was mounted and I'll show you how we mounted it in in another one um, then it you we used uh, this is you know that stuff they do uh, you know the frames out of you know the little things that go inside of pictures that's what we used for this on the back and it was just stapled on and the attachment here so the, it's it's good to have the back covered Whenever you're doing needle needlework or framing needlework, it rarely has glass in it. Most of the time it is just, you know, so that is open to the elements. And so like this one has not been ever washed. <laughs> so I need to take it apart and clean it and then put it back together uh, eventually. Because this one, when it's properly done, when needlework is properly done, properly framed you can take it out and have it and either clean it or have it clean when it's you know other ways no you can't but this one is so uh, I'll just put that one aside most of the time you will see instead and the way I prefer to do it is to use craft paper and we will do that at the end of the class tonight and I will apply craft paper to the back of, of one of the professionally um, done frames. Framing is expensive, so it's why it's good to learn how to do it yourself. Um, years ago, I had won a best of show at a, at a local quilt show, quilt uh, competition, and one of the prizes was $300 of framing at a needle workshop, and I thought, okay, I've got something I need to have framed. Well, all it did was the frame, nothing else. I have to do the phone core, mount it myself, $300 pretty much did it. It is expensive to have things framed well. I know you can get them cheaper than that when you have Michaels or AC Moore or Hobby Lobby do your framing for you. It is a little bit cheaper, but it's still expensive. So anyway, there's that one. Okay, uh, we're gonna, the first method, now this was a frame that I got from probably Michaels. And they had a special on them, and it had glass in it. Um, I did have to sacrifice the glass. And what you were looking for when you are looking at a commercial frame that you're going to buy at, at, say, Walmart or AC Moore or any of the, uh, you know, Michaels, that kind of thing. You want something as deep as you can possibly get in here. The ones that are made for needlework that you want glass, they usually have sometimes multiple bevels here sometimes there'll be one for the glass and there'll be another one for your project that goes in beside but then that thick that frame is going to be at least an inch to two inches thick and it's going to be expensive uh, so most of the time i will buy a commercial frame and it's usually too narrow here to do the glass as well plus i think the glass takes away from it 
Uh, what you ideally want to do is have one, I'm going to move this bigger so I can get this back in here. And this is just using staples to seal it in. And you just use a screwdriver to pull it out. But this fit, get it in here. I usually do this to get it in there. <laughs> Take the staples and Although I want to take it out again, because I want to show you a technique here. Okay. Once this is... Another one? There's three? Okay. I don't need three. <laughs> I got a little carried away there with the staples, didn't I? When I... Okay, there we go. See, it, uh, and then it has another little plastic piece and it's not quite deep enough although I could have put glass so when you take it apart you want to have at least room here in order to put uh, either staples you can also get what they call diamond points and I don't have any here that actually go in with a pair of pliers and it's just a little flat piece of metal and they're called diamond points and that's another way to mount that in here uh, I probably could go back and put glass, but I don't particularly like glass with needlework because you can't see the dimensionality of it. When, and also you get glare and all that stuff going on. This one was done in 1995, again with commercial stuff. So, not thinking. This is that piece of cardboard that came with it, okay? And... I found, because I didn't think that I should cut this down a little bit so that I could fit it in and properly stretch this on, but I couldn't do that. So what I did is I took Wonder, uh, not Wonder Under, Steamacine, or actually I think it was Wonder Under, and it is fused on. So when I was done with the, with the embroidery, then I just simply put Wonder Under on the back and I fused it to the back of this, this thick piece of chipboard. And that's all I did for that. The only drawback to this is now I can't take it out to clean it. Uh, the other thing, too, is that you have to have it perfectly flat because see how this is cut at the raw edges, and I don't particularly like that. Yeah, see, that leaves the raw edge. Uh, also, another thing is if you're going to do this method where you're just having that piece of flat piece, because if you cut it too short, you can't wrap it and stretch it anyway. Um, you have to make sure that this part of the bevel is wide enough to cover any raw edges. Um, you want this to go right out to the edge. If not, it's going to show this ugliness through it. And so this one just goes, this one was uh, easy. I think these were on sale. I, I got three of them because it's a set of three that I did. And they all fit. And then I just to put this back in, I'm just going to take the screwdriver and push those staples back out of the way. There we go. Come here. There. Okay. And then you take the screwdriver. Oh, and I'll put this back in there just to help to protect it. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and cover the back of this. In fact, I may do that anyway once I get it. I think I might have to sacrifice the chipboard and to soak it and get that thing out to clean it because um, that's 30 years, almost 30 years that's been in there. So it's collected a lot of pollution. So and this just goes back down. Now, I didn't get this in there right. Oh, <laughs> I put these down and didn't get them in. I'll, I'll fix that later. So, let me see. What did I do? Left. Oh, I didn't put the staples up. That's why. Okay. You can usually do this a few times before the staples break. And if the staples break, you just get a staple gun and do it again. Although you don't have to, you could use little tiny brad nails. Although my favorite is the diamond points. Those are the easiest things to put in. And I don't have any here. But you can get those at Hobby Lobby or Michael. I usually go to Michael's because that's what we have in our area. And this is ready to go back. And of course I need to put the hanger back on. 
These are ones that I had to repair because this was on the wall that was hit by the truck on the inside. So one of them broke and I luckily fixed them. So, okay, now this is another one that is professionally done as well. Um, and it was done by, I got the, no, this one I did in the Azores, I believe. And this one we had, we had a little bit better equipment. We had what we, I call it, a kachunk machine because it had a miter chop and so you put your piece of wood this way and you just pulled it down just like a paper you know a uh, thing that cuts holes in paper and it would cut your miter for you and then it is put in and again this one I'm going to take out we didn't in the Azores you you had what you had you know there were there was no stores to go buy things so we put them in with just little brads this I am going to take apart in order to clean. And this one had the paper backing. And again, this one was in the accident and it does need cleaning. And what I like about this is that this is, you are able to clean this. And I'll just take this off a minute. The hanger is simply two eye, eye screws. And it's put on a piece of foam core. And this foam car is going to come off. Or all this tape. It's just sealed on with tape. I need trash here. And you can see, oh, you can see it's got, it's going to, I'm going to show you the method how it was done. It was stretched onto foam core. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tape off and I'm going to soak this in restoration soap. This, uh, we were in the Azores between 1983 and 85, so this is a long, no, 80, yeah, 83 to 87, we were there three, uh, we were there almost five, uh, four years. So, again, this can be taken apart in order to clean, which is what I'm going to do. It is so full of dust, and I'm going to go get diamond points to put it back. So, and I'm going to scrub this out, just take, take a, something and scrub all this out. And I'll show you how to put on the paper later. This is not the ideal frame. And this was, let me get that nail out of the way. This was, this is a dollar store frame. It's even worse <laughs> than the uh, Michaels one. But it was a dollar and a quarter. And this is just something that I did. Uh, I made up this design really quick, and so I, I thought it looked cute in a sewing room, but it's not no great heirloom, so I really don't care. <laughs> so it's got glass in it. I will have to sacrifice this glass. So this is not useful. I'm gonna take it out. And this has dime. These are what we call diamond points. And let me get this into a safe place so it doesn't break. But this is a, I think this is made out of styrofoam. It's really super cheap, super light. Um, it's got a very, very shallow bevel. So that's why I know I can't keep the, um, the glass for sure. And it may even be a little bit thick for the um, foam core, but I don't care. In fact, if it doesn't go on, I will super glue it in here. I don't, or, you know, glue gun it. It came with these hangers that was on the back really cheap i don't know i might keep these hangers glue i'll you know just take a glue gun and probably when i'm all done just glue gun this to something so that it can or to the back of it so that i can hang it i don't know i'll see what I, if not i will just you know uh what's the name of that stuff alien tape i got it at lowe's It'll hang anything. I love that stuff. So anyway, it's really cheap. So here is the design, okay? And this is a design that I digitized on palette in a future um, Thursday night. I will do a palette demonstration and show you how I digitized this because it really didn't take very long. And so it's just nothing but a few squirrelies, curly cues and and I had done these before, so I just pulled them from something I had made before. So anyway, this is foam core, and I got it on a big sheet. It was 
this was also at the dollar store and I think it was oh well it's not a dollar anymore everything I think it was like a dollar 75 for a big sheet of foam core and see it's just two pieces of fab of paper with some styrofoam in the middle and it was black they didn't have white that's probably why it was sale and it's like not real good quality but you know like I don't care what I did was I took some glue and I just took some Elmer's glue all nothing special and a roller and I glued it all on so uh, glued the paper on so that because you can really tell the difference if I try to mount that on black it's gray and ugly if I try if I change it to white it looks a lot better so what I want to do is find the center and I need a tape measure or something to measure with. Okay. We need tape measure, but that's okay. So I want to find, I'll turn it on the back. And I want to find the center. Okay, so it's uh eight and a quarter, so I need it four and an eighth. So I need to mark the top. I'm just gonna do it in chalk, four and an eighth. And then I just need to know where to, to make my centers. There's four. And I'm marking four and an eighth. Doesn't have to be exact. There's nobody going to come after you if it's not perfect. Okay. This is a little short of 11. So it would be 10. I'll say 11 and 3 quarters. Or 10 and 3 quarters. Which, when I don't feel like figuring out what it is, because my brain doesn't want to work today. This is called COVID brain. Okay, it's uh, five and three eighths. Okay, and then five and three eighths. I just want to mark my crosshairs. Five and three eighths. Okay. Where did my gap? Another thing you will, and also I have just creased my centers here. So. I'm going to put this on the front, approximately where the center is, and put it on the back here. So, I'm just going to line it up, do marks with, and just guessing where it is. I like to use applique pins. They're very short. You can use regular thin pins. However, you run the risk of if it's the pin is too long and you don't have it straight, it's going to poke through. So, I'm going to... Fold this over and pin it and nest. Where did I go here? I should do it towards me. Okay, I'm going to put this in. And I'm going to put in a pin inside the foam. Okay, I'm going to stretch the other side a little bit. First one, you sort of have to hold on to them a little bit until you get enough pins in there because it keeps wanting to come out. You want to cut this foam core about an eighth of an inch less than this the whatever this measurement is so you want that foam core why because you gotta you got to allow for this lap over okay I've got one here and one here okay and I'm going to cut some of that that is just well let me let me do this first okay I put this on here and pin it hardest thing is that my fingers aren't as nimble as they used to be <laughs> when I was in my 20s. Okay, I'm going to check it over and, and check it. Okay, so now, okay, I'm going to come to the end here and give it a little bit of a stretch. And I'm going to start from the center out. And I'm going to, I keep doing the point and about every half an inch or so, I'm going to put in an applique pin on either side. And I'll put one here on the end and start filling in. I'm going to come, I'm 
I'm going to do these about an inch apart so that I can get it done. <laughs> Otherwise, I, you, you want to take your time and get this on here stretched nicely. And applique pins are tiny. They're not even a half an inch long. And they're very, very thin. Okay. Really, you don't go all the way across. You just do about a few inches, go to the other side, and stretch it. I'm just going to put a few here. They're hard to grab today. Especially with arthritis. Didn't have it years ago when I did this. Okay, I want over here. I don't want to go all the way to the end because you can't what I like is I don't push the pins all the way in usually at first. Oops, I just totally went through the front on that. Um because you you might want to pull them back out and reposition because now we've got this side, but it's not really taut. So when we come over here, I usually work from this side now, and then I'm going to work on pulling these. Okay, I'm gonna keep on pulling a few. And come over this side and pull here. And I might have to come back and readjust the vertical. It's not hard. It just can be a little on the tedious side. Okay, and we will just... I will come back and get these nice and straight and as anal retentive as I like to be so that everything is stretched. You could also put in a layer of batting in here to give it a little three-dimensionality to it. But you would cut your, if you wanted to pad this so that it was would come out a little bit, then what you would do is you would cut the batting the same same dimensions as the, as the foam core. Because you don't want to wrap the foam core. You don't need to. You just want it adhered. And usually I just take some 505 spray and just spray it to the, to the backing, to the foam core. And then you can you can you can really press it and have this nice and puffy, which is what I think I'm going to end up doing with it because you know I have a little bit of puckering going on, and this you can fix this puckering, but I think I'm going to put in some batting and that's going to make it really nice, okay? And then what you would do is you would fit it in here, and you also have to make sure you don't put it in backwards. I have done that before, okay? Then what you do is you would cut these. Or this one's too long. I would cut that. And then you're going to take ordinary masking tape. And it's it's ideal if you can find archival quality low acid tape. I'm just going to put little bits of tape. You saw how much tape I had on the other one. And I don't want to put too much tape because it's going to rip off. <laughs> or painter's tape. Whatever. Uh, it's like it's best to have something archival so the acid doesn't eat through. And this one is just barely fitting, that it will fit. But see, that's going to look cute when it's done. There we go. Just to give you an idea what it will look like finished. Once I get it all stretched on there, and I'll show that to you next week, because I'm going to I'm going to put in the batting, and I'm going to take my time to stretch this out so that everything is nice and smooth and pretty. And you know, for what? Well, I, I have enough foam core to do about five or about four or five different frames if I wanted to. Uh, but this is a cute, inexpensive way to to do your needlework or anything else that you want to mount. What's really pretty is to take some pretty background fabric, and if your grandmother or whatever left you some of those beautiful lace doilies or crochet doilies, you can always take steam a seam and, and mount them to the backing of a fabric and, and have a beautiful heirloom of, a, you know, a, a picture frame of, of a beautiful air, heirloom that you had. And then probably what I would do is then I would go, now I know that I cannot nail into this because this is styrofoam. <laughs> you can't nail into it. 
However, I can hang frames if I have this here, is if I give it, uh, if I tape it in or super glue it in so that it stays. Uh, and then I can put the paper over top of it and seal it in. So I like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's for the sewing room. Who cares? You know, so, so anyway, and I would, I would, well, you know, you want to neat it up. You want to like, you, you could either miter your corners or, or I, heck I wouldn't. I would just, just cut it shorter, maybe trim across, you know, just like, and then just tape it down. You trim most of it away and then just tape it down and then seal the back of it with, with paper. And you could seal the back with paper easily. So, okay, so let me put these millions of pins away before they all hit the floor and work their way into my feet. Oh, goodness, they're everywhere. That's the one thing. You might want to do this on a map because these little pins like to go everywhere. And they're doing it anyway. Okay. But they will pick up with a magnet. I just have to do it before Lily gets her little little feet in here. Okay, now this other piece. This one was professionally framed. Uh, this one was done in 97. I did this one at, um, I must have done this one at Andrews. I think I did this at Andrews where they had the, uh, the frames. Oh, the one in 95. I did that at Andrews too. So anyway, I've taken this out and I, I fixed this last summer because this is one of them that was damaged in the accident. So I had to take it apart and it got dirty. It had soot all over it. So I did take it out and wash it. It was as yellow as this. Actually, it was dirtier because it had soot on it from the, uh, the exhaust of that silly person's car. Uh, so I did wash it, but it's been in the heat, you know, outside after I fixed it. So I'm ready to seal it back up. So the tape turned yellow. And again, I didn't have diamond points. I had brads. And I just simply, how I put these in is that I simply took a screwdriver and then a hammer and hit the screwdriver and then, and then uh, worked them in that way. And then my husband, who's a little bit stronger hands, would take the pliers and simply, oh, I'm missing and simply drove I missed lost one <laughs> okay so now I want to seal the back of this and this is very easy to do so you just want simple craft paper and I've sort of cut it so that it mostly fits okay so what I'm going to do it's a little bit on the rolling side is that I am going to take some glue and I'm using Elmer's Elmer school glue nothing special Elmer's glue wall. Oh, no, I didn't use, well, you could use school glue. It doesn't really matter. I have lots of glue wall. And I'm going to put some glue all the way around it. I'm going to take a roller. I might need more glue. To, I didn't prime the roller. So I need a little bit more right there to prime it. And I'm going to just roll it on smoothly. I don't want any big lumps or anything. But I want to cover the wood with the glue. And again, Elmer's school glue is good. Uh, is a good one to use because it is water soluble. So later on, all you really have to do is soak it. It'll come right off. Actually, same thing with this glue all. I think. Actually, I think what I usually used last time was wood glue. Now <laughs> whatever you got, you use it. Okay, I'm going to take this on, and I want to just smooth it on, press it down well. It doesn't have to fit exact. and it doesn't have to fit drum tight. Okay. See, and it's way not drum tight. In order to get that to set, usually you want to let it dry for a little bit, but I'm going to take a little iron. Oops, it's not plugged in. That would help. And I'm going to heat, heat it dry. 
Use the iron to dry the glue. And just like with the Elmer School glue, that's going to set the glue, but you want this well glued. And you'll feel it when it isn't. <laughs> Because we have to do one more thing after we get this part glued. I'm just waiting for this to get a little hotter. And you'll see it bubble. Don't worry about it. Just sort of set it down so that it's nice and heat set. And you can feel it when it's good and set. And I'm drying it with the iron. And even if you did, you have a bubble. If you've got, if you've got enough glue on it, um, it's going that the iron is going to remelt that glue and set it for you. Okay, and I think that is. See, it's not tight enough, but it is well glued. Alrighty. So, I usually like to use a straight edge razor or a craft knife. So I turn it on this end and at the end I would just take my razor blade right even with the frame and cut. I didn't get it cut off. But I will get that. There we go. I'm just using that razor blade to cut the edges. See? I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Can you? Let me see. Because I'm on the other side. <laughs> oh, you can see this side. Okay, so. I'm going to raise it up. And just. And see, I'm just taking this. Got to be careful. Usually craft knife is safer. But holding it up to the camera is. Probably not the safest thing I could do today. <laughs> I'm just using this kind of blade. I will come back with a craft knife and fix this better. But, or not. If it looks good enough, I don't care. Throw that in the trash. And I ooh, missed a big spot here. <laughs> An exacto knife works too. Okay, get it started. Don't... Yeah. Don't grab it and start it. Just the uh, best thing to do is start in the middle, work your way to the edges. Don't want to get cut. That would be a nasty cut that would be hard to heal. Because you'll get paper fibers in the wound. That would not be a good thing. Okay. And now the last thing you do is that you take a water spritzer. The finer the mist, the better. Wet it. Doesn't have to be saturated. Just wet it a little bit. Okay. And you're going to take a hair dryer. Where's my hair dryer? It's going to get loud. <laughs> so you take your hair dryer. And you will do this until it firms up. And it will be drum, drum tight. Sometimes you might have to do it a couple times. But you want that water. You can use a sponge also. See, it's starting to warm up a little bit. It probably needs more water because I wanted it to shrink. You can see it's pulling up in the middle where I've been drying. Sorry if it's a little loud. I said, and as you dry this, sometimes you might have, like over here where I got it a little bit more wet, it's, see, it's, it's shrinking up. And this will be drum tight. You might have to, like I said, might have to do it a couple times. 
but this is getting to be drawn at, see I don't have to it's coming I can see I can actually see the paper flatten out isn't that nice now it's it's completely sealed I still have to do a little more down here see how see how it's rippled and watch as I hit it with the iron or with the hair dryer It's shrinking up. There we go. Look, this one's already perfectly flat. And this is the last little section. There we go. Okay. <laughs> So that's now all I have to do is put my eye screws back in here and lay the ribbon or the uh, the wire across and it's a uh, uh, other way I would have done it backwards wouldn't I and now it's perfectly sealed I'll probably come back in here and just do a little touch up with the with the um with the razor just to get a little bit of this I probably need a sharper Or a brand new craft knife or exacto knife will work really well and see now you've got it perfect now this is a total professional job if you were to spend three hundred dollars to have this would cost you probably about two to three hundred dollars to have it framed exactly like this and have it come back where the back is just as nice as the front and have it ready to hang but he has any questions okay Janet said she has a beautiful needlepoint can't read this a large that my mo your mother made and her father made the frame it must be at least 30 years old Wow that's a treasure what should I use to clean the needlepoint uh, it still looks great um it depends on what it what it's made of if it's um if it's like a cotton you could probably use like Dove soap or you know Dove dishwashing soap is the best thing to clean them in. Uh, make sure it's an, make sure uh, if it's got reds and so to put in a color catcher with it um, to try to clean it. Try cleaning just the you know how the back of it. Try cleaning just the corner of it first to see what happens. Um, I've also used restoration soap, but restoration soap can pull dye out, so be careful with that. Uh, a lot of times I just plain use um, Dove dishwash, you know, the dishwashing soap, that's it. Nothing special, no harsh detergents, you're not going to put it in the washing machine. I would just let it soak and don't scrub it, just sort of rinse it through and just move it up and down like this. So, so restoring needlework is nice I like restoration soap for linens because you linens that have turned yellow that are that are you know white linens will come nice blue white again uh, and be careful don't put them in the you can put them not in this direct Sun but put it in um, you know just hot to, to dry quickly so the quicker it dries the better so so colors won't run let me know how that works out but like I said try the back first Oh, uh, wool, uh, well, if it's wool, again, you could probably use the, uh, or just hair shampoo, not of, with a lot of smell, but, you know, like the, the uh, I think Dove makes a, a shampoo that has no perfumes or dyes or anything in it, that might work. And again, cold water and don't agitate it, especially if it's wool. You just want to really soak it, sort of flush it up and down a little bit don't agitate it because then it'll felt up on you um, and then try try that like just a couple things um, or just a couple things that I want to show you from last week that we did uh, I did finish some things and I just wanted to show you that this one is finished now so this is what the back looks like when you put the craft paper on. So this one is finished. I still have to get some um, the little screw-in eyes and more of the uh, of the hanging wire. 
Mostly it was so old that it was like disintegrated. So that so that's finished. And then if you remember this one, this one, remember I, I think this one I said I had to wash. And if you remember from last week, this was nearly brown. And what I did was I washed, I took it apart and I washed it in restoration soap. And I got that online. It's made by, it's made up in Pennsylvania, but that stuff works really good. And all I did was I washed it, I, I didn't wash it, I just soaked it overnight. In that, a, a couple of times I have cleaning the water. And, uh, but that, I mean, this was almost as brown as this right here. It was really horrible, if you remember. If you want to see what it looked like, just look at last week's uh, mini class, and I'll show you what it looked like. And then I did finish. This was the one I was working on. And, yes, I know it's backwards. It's with the, um, this is with the little tiny um, frame, super thin frame from the dollar store. And so what I, and see the back is nice and neat. Oh, so I will see you online. I'll talk to you later. If you have any questions or comments, put them, uh, leave them below and I'll get back to you. See you later. Or you can always uh, uh, waltz, email me at waltzquilt at yahoo.com. Okay. Let me know how it goes. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.